I'm a hair mineral analysis expert. I have a background in functional medicine and I educate people using HTMA testing to maximize health, erase debilitating symptoms and gain energy. I'm a multi-time kettlebell sport world champion and I'm constantly searching for high performance pros from all over the world to bring you this human optimization podcast. My name is Lisa Patel Killa. Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of the Human Optimization Podcast. And I'm so super excited today to have Everett Sloan, owner of CrossFit Bytown, here with us. So Everett has been active his entire life. Started bodybuilding as a teen in the basement uh, with his father's old weeder set. I think all of our dads had those, didn't they? I know mine did for <laughs> sure. My brother did too. Uh, set off a lifelong love of physical activity. He was involved in a serious motorcycle accident in 2006, and we're going to hear more about that later, and was told he would probably never walk again. He used his knowledge to get himself back better than ever and went on to compete at the national level in many different sports, including bodybuilding, powerlifting, Olympic weightlifting, CrossFit, and strongman. In 2012, he opened his gym, CrossFit Bytown, to help people learn to live the healthiest life they can, not just training, but nutrition, mindset, movement, and quality of life. He is a lifelong student and plans on always learning and getting better. Welcome, Everett. Thank you. So let's talk fitness. I mean, you talked about, you know, uh, in the basement of your dad's uh, house, getting a physical activity was love of life, right? So let's talk about that, how it got you on your, on your journey. Well, I'd say probably like most um, young boys in the 80s, it was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, he was the, 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 the movie star, the, the bodybuilder. He was just kind of making his transition and watching him. It's like, okay, you look great. You can, you're charismatic. You can, you can do everything. You can look great. You can be an actor, eventually basically a politician. Like I even remember having the old, uh, uh, with the weeder set came with an old poster and it was a uh, part of Arnold's modern encyclopedia of, uh, of bodybuilding. And we would, I would just go through all those movements thinking that if I'm doing the same thing as, as Arnold's doing right now, then I'll look like Arnold. And after a, a couple of years of doing that, it just, it uh, has, especially as a young teenage boy with the uh, half-ass genetics, it wasn't really uh, getting what I wanted. So I started to, to kind of learn more um, basically about what I was doing. Like I was, sorry, I was satisfied with the results. I was definitely, I changed my body, but it wasn't kind of what I was expecting. I was looking for this, the secret that made, uh, that allowed people like that to, to kind of make those changes. Well, I know now that the secret for most of those were drugs. Um, but the, that was the, um, the love is just seeing that you could, you weren't kind of stuck with the, the hand that you were dealt that you could always kind of, um, get better. You can change things. The, the main thing is I thought because I looked healthy that I kind of, I was healthy. And that was when, um, I was still doing bodybuilding and kind of powerlifting when it came around to uh, my motorcycle accident in 2006. And that's when I realized that I wasn't as kind of athletic or as, uh, as healthy as I, as I could be. Um, because with all the years of, of isolation on machines and um, kind of uh, doing partial rep ranges, things got tight. Everything was always done in isolation. So I wasn't really all that athletic. I probably looked like an athlete, but I couldn't really jump well. I, and that was part of the issue is probably also why I was injured. I was, um, in 2006, I was playing around, um, on my motorcycle in a, a dirt, like a, a dirt pit motocross. Mm -hmm. And I, there was, wasn't really supposed to be there. Uh, there was a whole bunch of garbage there and crashing and, uh, busting up my legs. Um, uh, wow. when I got to the hospital, the, uh, realized that I had, um, I had fractured my femur, my tib fib on my left side, blew out both my knees, broke my foot, um, my elbow, my shoulder. Um, but the, the leg was a, uh, uh, the leg was pretty bad. And to the point where, um, in the beginning, they weren't sure if they were going to be able to save it or not. Oh and then when I, when I did, um, finally get out of numerous surgeries, there was numerous infections. Um, the rehab didn't go as well. I, after I got the, the bill of clean health and a return to work three months later, turns out I had a major infection. I had to go back in and get all the ligaments and stuff um, removed. But they said I would pretty much, I would probably never be able to walk. And I would, if I did, it would be with a cane or the limb. So I started looking into functional fitness, um, mm -hmm. basically just how to restore function. Uh, this was 2006, 2007, kind of just when CrossFit started becoming popular. Yeah. Um, so I logged into the, just by 
doing, I think it was, wasn't even Google back then. I think it was probably a Yahoo or something. <laughs> and uh, ended up finding the, uh, the cross page and started going through trying to understand how to do some of these, these exercises as uh, kind of part of my rehab. Even when I was in the hospital, I, was, I would drive everybody crazy because I would um, take my wheelchair and run it up and down the halls trying to get exercise and trying to learn how to like lean back and do a wheelie um, and stuff like that. So I, I still tried to stay active, but my, my lower body was, uh, was badly injured. My yeah. left leg, I had, um, even still now, I have lots of plates and screws in it. Mm-hmm. And I'm also missing all of my, my all four ligaments in my, in my leg. Um, so my left leg, I have no MCL, ACL, PCL, MCL. I have no, uh, cartilage. I have no meniscus. It's just kind of bone on bone since yeah. 2006. Wow. Um, I've been, um, I was able to, to kind of train through that understanding, um, how to like, use muscles, proper stability, working actually more on some flexibility. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, cause I've, as a bodybuilder, pretty much your stretches, you would just go like uh, before chest, you'd kind of do this. And that was kind of all the stretching that you would do. Um, and I, so what I ended up doing is starting to learn how to do like proper stretching, um, actual functional movements and learning how to use, move my own body weight. I, I absolutely fell in love with it when I, when I started, this is also when CrossFit wasn't competitive. The CrossFit games, I think that was the inaugural year of the CrossFit games. And it was just at a ranch down at somebody's house in California. And it was just kind of anybody shows up, it was just kind of uh, for bragging rights. Fun, yeah, fun thing. As the, the year started going on, it started becoming more competitive. There's prizes, and then people started training from it. what CrossFit originally was was one workout a day, um, performed at high intensity, and it was to improve your life outside of the gym. So you can go play sports. So you, if you wanted to go do um, a 10k run, you might not do great at it, but you're still physically capable of doing it. And that was kind of the the points and then when CrossFit started becoming competitive and it got the game started being televised it started getting more popular people started wanting to just compete or to look like the, the competitive athletes and then people started doing too much getting broken um stuff like that and then so it started going from like health versus performance and mm-hmm. people started going more for performance like their knees hurt their back hurts they had to take five Advil in order to be, go through a training session and that is kind of not what we originally kind of started off to. So we kind of went back to basics and uh, myself in the gym, everything we started going more towards just general health, which is a lot more than just the physical aspect. It's the, the mental aspect, the, the diet, the sleep, uh, mindset, all of that starts to make breathing, all starts to make a, yeah. a big difference. So let's talk about CrossFit by Town, how it came to be. I mean, that was about six years after, right, your accident and kind yeah. of after that rehab. So so let's talk about that. So I've, I'd always been, uh, since like a kid, I've been interested in um, uh, fitness, health, nutrition. Um, so after college, I started um, working and then eventually managing a uh, like supplement store because that was uh, that was kind of well, it still is very popular, but the supplements was a, was a big thing. And it was kind of the, uh, the early days where it was kind of the wild west, where there was a lot of, uh, of, uh, questionable supplements. There still is, but there's, mm-hmm. um, there was like the, the androstein and those ones that like, it was kind of like a, a fake steroid and they, they would end up causing liver damage. And there's all types of, of bad stuff on the market back then. Yeah. But it was something I was interested in. My grandmother, um, up until her nineties, she had like, never taken a, a prescription pill. She was always into like, when she would come visit, she would have these huge tray of all these vitamins and herbs and <laughs> minerals. And I was yeah. always kind of amazed at like, it's my, my grandmother was a, was a bright, bright active lady. So I was like, Hey, if it's working for her, maybe she's, uh, she's kind of onto something. Yeah. So after, um, being the supplement store, I was do, doing personal training on the, on the side cause I'd be able to get, um, clients from the, the store. So I was still doing it kind of more of a, make a little couple extra bucks and more of a kind of a hobby and also for me to, to learn how to do it. I'd always wanted to, to kind of take it the next step, but I had a, at the time I had a comfortable job and um, it was, it was, it was a safe decision. It was, it was easy money. It wasn't great money, but it was easy. And it was a kind of a, a guaranteed paycheck. Mm-hmm. In 2012, we, uh, uh, we'd been trying, but we realized that we we're, my wife was pregnant. So we kind of figured uh, it's kind of now or never. Um, so I think she was maybe three months pregnant when we decided to just jump in with both feet and, uh, opened up the, uh, the gym. Originally we had, um, we had business partners, um, did make it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it was probably the first location, probably 700 square feet. And I might be uh, um, kind of pushing it. The, uh, it was an old garage. It was tiny. Um, it, we just kind of used cash. We never took loans, um, started small. If we had three barbells and we had more members, we'd end up using that money to buy more barbells and slowly grew the business. This is the way I got the idea for that was um, Greg Glassman from CrossFit uh, mm-hmm. originally put an article of years ago, of basically like how to properly start a box. And my, uh, the first gym was based off of the original CrossFit Santa Cruz. It was almost the same layout, same size. And it was, it was start small and kind of work your way up. We started, we, I think our official opening was November of 2012, but while we were in there, um, I think maybe September, um, doing cleaning renos and just sitting around, we invited people to come in and train for free. Um, one, it gave us practices. I've, I'd been doing one-on-one, but it was with long-term clients. And I've also, mm-hmm. uh, hadn't done with new people. I haven't done it in, in group classes. And I also never had never taught CrossFit. So we figured that if we opened and it was free, um, they, people would more like to come and they wouldn't complain if uh, um, they'd be more willing to give some feedback as to what we could change. Yep. Started doing it like that. After less than a year, we had already outgrown the place. Um, we were working out half in the gym and half in the, the parking lot. And the uh, uh, winter was coming, so we had to to find a bigger place. Oh, I also forgot about the business partners. We ended up having to uh, to buy them out, um, which I learned my lesson not to go in with partners because somebody's always going to be feel like they're doing more work um, versus the other person. So there's always yes. a little bit of resentment there unless there's a clear understanding from the beginning. Yeah. So uh, less than a year later, we moved to another location out on uh, on City Center. Um, we stayed there for maybe a year as well. Outgrew that place. It was also a uh, uh, a bad layout, but we outgrew that place. So then we moved to the uh, the place on Somerset, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't even know how many years it's been there. But that's been our our home now. And we're well up until this quarantine, we were uh, we're still growing and still uh, doing well. And we're gonna I guess find out how this is all gonna work when we get through this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I know, so, so, I mean, COVID-19 has been tough on a lot of businesses, right? And, uh, and that yeah. have been deemed non-essential. So, I mean, how, so tell us how you're keeping uh, the members at, um, at Bytown engaged and active during this time, because that's so important too, right? One thing is I don't understand how gyms, massage, chiro and stuff is not deemed essential for the mental health, not necessarily yeah. the physical health for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. It, it should be. We're, we're not just um, trainers were, were counselors, were there somebody to, to chat about their, their social output. So we realized that it's a, we built a community. Like most people have kind of the, the three places they spend their time, home, work, and one other location. This is mm-hmm. kind of how Starbucks based their, their business model. This is why they want people going there to hang out is this is where they're going to spend basically their time. It becomes kind of part of their identity. So we wanted people basically to spend as much time. So we've always strived to have uh, good engagement online with our, um, our, like our chat groups and little outings, challenges, things like this. But everything got kind of uh, pushed, put on fast forward with this, uh, the, the shutdown. Right. We had to quickly figure out um, how to do things. Um, so I got one of my coaches, Taylor, to, uh, uh, he's having a blast. He does, he does daily videos, um, tries to add a little bit of comedy in them. Um, <laughs> just something, easy workouts that people can do at home. Yeah. We realized that most people don't have a lot of equipment. So we pretty much lent out almost everything we had in the gym. It wasn't doing any good in the gym anyway. And it'll give people an excuse to basically to, uh, sorry, not an excuse. They have something to, to at least work out with. Exactly. And yeah. our programming or workouts were based on, on that. It's mostly body weight and it's a lot of uh, stuff that people have bored, like kettlebells and dumbbells from the gym. Mm-hmm. The, we have the, um, the online zoom classes. Some people, or go-getters no problem they will do the workout on their own like our our 6 a.m class i'm pretty sure most of them are still working out at 6 a.m uh, <laughs> and they're like they're just kind of do, doing their thing yeah. um which is good if they can keep the routine 100%. Awesome. but for a, a lot of other people this class uh the online classes lets them see people they might need that um that accountability to do something like mm-hmm. how many people have a treadmill at home in their basement and uh it's just been collecting dust because it's it's hard to work out 
uh, on your own. Yeah. The main thing we want people now is, is just to maintain their, their health, their, their strength, their cardio, their mental health. So we also realized that during this, that some people use the gym mostly to socialize. Uh, we would know like some people, they would it'd show up late for class or they would call, always kind of like um, half-ass the workouts. And then we realized that for them, it, this was a, a social opportunity and the fitness was kind of a, a side effect. So this is where we started trying to basically encourage them to like, if you're having trouble doing it at home, do something you like doing. If you like to stretch, start doing some yoga. If you like to run, like right now, the most important thing is doing something for your physical and mental health versus doing the, the one thing it's, it's doing something that you enjoy and just whatever is going to keep you motivated and keep you moving. It's definitely going to, uh, um, to help. We've, we try doing uh, little daily challenges for people, um, allow people to, to, to try kind of new or different things. Some of some of the people needed um, or opted for, not necessarily needed, mm -hmm. but opted for doing um, online coaching with uh, some of the coaches. Um, we're still learning how to do that. It's a little bit more uh, more difficult. Yes, I'll say it. I'm. I definitely feel like a like an old man when I say like I absolutely hate coaching over Zoom. Um, <laughs> I feel like there's, I've gotten used there's, to it. <laughs> there's less, yeah, there's. I feel there's less less energy. Uh, it's harder to read people. Um, if, yes. you, if they're at a bad angle, you can't really see it. It's a tiny screen. That's um, a hard one. Yeah. So it's a, it's a challenge. Yeah, and like it's. It's a lot like watching like exercise demo videos and you're like looking at it and like <laughs> trying to see what's going on versus like it's if true. I was in the gym and I couldn't see a, a good angle, I would walk to the side and see their, their squat or something like that, yeah. which is, it's a lot harder. But it, if, if, as long as like at this point, as long as people are moving and doing something, I'm happy. This is yeah. the, at times like this, this is where people need hobbies. This is, it's a lot like being retired. Everybody's yeah. like, oh, like I want to retire. I can't, can't wait. And okay, well, what are you going to do with your time? Your yep. job that just took up eight hours plus of your day, you are now, the first week or two is great. You have nothing to do. Great. And but then like, you start to get great. bored. Yeah. And then what do you do after that? <laughs> yeah. You've got to find And that's what they were saying is like, it's, it's, a, it's a lot like retirement. You have to find hobbies. You have to, to find a schedule. Yep. Um, so we, we've, and we're also trying to uh, come up with more ideas, not knowing how long this is going to to last we're trying mm -hmm. to help people with uh, nutrition we uh, we're trying to get some people to do some uh, um some talks stuff like that to, to help yeah. like with like mental health with um with basically like positive mindset and just to, something that we can offer to, to help people get through these these times because a lot of people have reached out but i also know a lot of people are are hesitant to reach out because they don't want to say that they're lonely or that they don't want to, to say that they they need to talk to somebody like you're sitting at home in a tiny room all by yourself, it's going to get pr pretty lonely pretty fast. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And, and yeah, so you did mention routine and I think that's super yeah. important because, you know, our bodies love routine. Our minds love routine. We all thrive when our, when we're having the same routine, we're getting a good night's sleep. And so, and, and we talked a little bit about that mental mindset, but tenacity is, is important when you're thinking about dealing with uh, the situation that we're in, right? And so, so let's talk about the routine and how crucial that really is. I think maybe some people don't even realize, and that's, that's one, one of the things I keep talking to my clients about is the new normal, right? We're, we're never going to be able to go back to the old, the hundred percent old normal, right? But there will be a new normal, but just how do we get there? Well, it's humans in general don't like change at all. It's, we prefer like homeostasis. It's, we find our, our comfort zone and this is why it's our comfort zone. It's stuff that we're, we're used to, the stuff outside that comfort zone. Like also if people have issues with um, anxiety and stuff like that, yeah. like, anxiety is pretty much is worrying about the future. And right now everything is completely unknown. So a lot of people are, are panicking, are like the, the stress, the cortisol levels are going up because the, everything's been thrown into disarray. The, we normally had these, these external cues for our day. So like mm -hmm. you get up, uh, you got to get the kids ready for school. Then you got to drive to work and then you, you clock in or whatever you do. You, you have your lunch break, you go home, you come home, you eat supper and you had all these, these external factors in order to keep your, um, your, your routine and like mm -hmm. your Monday to Friday, okay, this is what I did. And my, my Saturday, my Sunday, this is what I did. Now 
if it wasn't for watching CTV morning, when they, it shows up, it's like, Oh, by the way, today's like Wednesday. It's, oh, yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, like, it is Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everything is a, um, it's a blur because people don't have as much structure and routine and creating these internal cues, either using a um, accountability, which is mm-hmm. for many people, it's going to be a lot harder, but having a, a schedule or a, a daily goal or um, even like a friend to reach out and to to talk to a friend uh, to to cause to get you to 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 push to to, to exercise to go for a walk to work yeah. out through through Zoom something yeah. like that to just to have something external. Yeah, and I I have heard of a lot of people. So um, you know I know there's coaches. What you mentioned coaches, and I'm coaching through Zoom as well, um, and trying to keep that at a normal time and and in routine, but. I feel like there's a lot of people as well that are utilizing Zoom and just exercising with friends or getting together over Zoom to chat. And I think that's really healthy and I think that's a really smart thing to do. And again, as you mentioned, especially with those it'll people be, who It'll be great to see if it continues. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think too, yeah, we're kind of reaching out to those people who we may not talk to all the time and that might be far away that yeah. we don't normally have contact with. And I think that is... Uh, is really kind of cool and hopefully that does continue i like i've tried reaching out i know we, like we have because of the like the unbroken the people with like mental health substance abuse issues we also have some members with the, the battling basically like depression bad home life yeah. so i've tried to reach out to, to and always support those people personally mm-hmm. but the for for a lot of people the like we've have uh, like last night we had a like a game night where mm-hmm. a bunch of us just went on on zoom and uh, uh we played cards against humanity and i'm oh. hoping that this this contact is something that is people are going to realize um how important this the the social contact is when this is over and all of a sudden we don't go back to normal i'm hoping the new normal it might be a little bit less handshakes um but i'm hoping the new normal people are going to realize and appreciate um their their support structure their their like extended family um so that they can uh, they can understand the importance of this versus just go to work, go home, shut off my head, watch Netflix, basically go to work the next day and, exactly. and not appreciate the, um, the, the people in your life. And like understanding that, you know what, you do feel better when chatting with somebody for a little bit and talking about more about them instead of just basically broadcasting about yourself um, and just having a better connection with people as well. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And so, and so I think there's a lot of really cool things that people can do online with challenges. And so I do want to mention, because uh, one of the challenges that I'm running, you're involved with, and I'm so, so, so excited about that. We have a great lineup of coaches, seven days uh, of coaches from all over the world and, uh, and doing some pretty awesome workouts. And I'm not going to ruin it by telling them what you're going to do, because that would not be, we're not going to do that. But I think that it's really cool that a lot of people online are engaging and trying to get people engaged to do not only just um, fitness challenges either, right? You can't work out hard every day, but doing some health challenges and, you know, building some of those yeah, habits. Trying something new. I put out just a simple, I think it's on the blog either today or tomorrow or something mm-hmm. like that uh, about like trying, just be aware for the day when you get up and get down all day, try not to let your hands touch the floor. Just a simple little movement thing, just something to Ooh, like, so what did you do yesterday? Oh, this is what I did. Uh, because for so many people, especially like with the, some of the elderly I've dealt with is like when yes. they, they sit down or get up, they're like, they use their hands they're like, yes. oh, and they, they get up this way. And that ends up being a one, one, a really bad movement pattern, trying to use your upper body to get up versus your lower body. Yep. But this is what, like I've dealt with some, some elderly clients where like they were unsure of, of how to live at home because if they fell to the ground, um, they had trouble getting up. So I got them to, to demo it for me. So like go down and get back up. Well, of course you have a problem getting, but you're trying to basically like basically get up using nothing but your arms instead of using your, your legs was so breaking that movement pattern and understanding, just being aware of that. So simple little things um, like that. And one of the, the great tips I heard about um, basically for, for people who have an issue with trying to get into that mindset of training is like, is having a, a separate place at home and a separate like uniform. Mm. So if you're normally trained in your, in your living room, well, you don't normally associate your living room with uh, high intensity training or sweating or anything you associate it with comfort or watching television. So yeah. having a, a different place in your house or outside and having different clothes. If you're sitting around in um, your Lululemon because it's comfortable all day anyway, it's, it feels different versus like have you, even if 
have to have your your clothes set out. So you wake up, okay, these are my are my clothes. So I'm okay. gonna use this, and then at twelve, I'm gonna change into my workout clothes. I'm gonna work out, gonna have a shower, change back to my normal clothes, and then go on oh, throughout yeah. my day. And this, yeah. yeah, and like if you had before this, if your goal was to like a lot of people will say it's to lose ten pounds. If that was your goal before this it's still kind of your goal. Your goal is just probably delayed. So now your goal is you might not be able to, to do what you were doing to, to get to that point. So maybe your goal is on hold and you're coming up with a, a new plan and your goal 100%. is maybe to try not to gain any weight or uh, now that I can't work out, I'm going to, instead of trying to work out hundred percent, I'm going to try and work on um, understanding my eating or my food cravings mm-hmm. and just have something else to focus on instead of just being like, Oh, well, I can't work out. So whatever it's, I'm just going to, going to do it, which is kind of a give up attitude. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And, and yeah, time to, uh, so I said in a, a blog I wrote last week, it's, you know, embrace the time we have now because it's very precious and we didn't have it before. So what are you going to do with it? Right. What's your yeah, new goal? I can get to be? see like spending a ton of time watching my daughter. Like normally yeah. on certain days I wouldn't get home until she's already asleep and I'm getting, tons of time and probably going to be even awesome. here to witness her first steps, which is, so I'm looking at more of a, a yeah. positive aspect to that. And yeah. I get to keep my son busy, trying to keep my son busy as well, which is a, <laughs> a lot harder than I, than I thought. Than you expected. And I have a newfound respect for teachers. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I have no big kidding, appreciation right? for teachers now. I'm going to go on the picket lines with them, go back to school. <laughs> so the one thing I thought of kind of the other day is how a lot of people are, are wasting their, their times during this. Um, and just everything's a blur day to day. Like this is, I'm hoping it's not gonna be that big of a deal, but this is a, a fairly huge world event. And yeah, what do you want to be telling your kids in 20 years and how you made it through the great pandemic of 2020? Like, like, Oh, I sat around and watched Netflix and uh, gained 30 pounds, like versus yeah. like creating interesting stories or going out for walks and enjoying nature. Like I live close to the airport. Mm-hmm. On certain days, I can hear the air, the airplanes taking on, taking off and landing because it's so quiet here, which there's bar- barely any planes moving anymore. Right. But the uh, uh, it's just go outside, enjoy sunlight, go yep. enjoy some nature, pick up a hobby, go for a hike. Yep, go for a bike ride. I mean, I think we're lucky with that too because it's getting nicer weather now, so we can be outside. Uh, you know, there's lots of things to do. So, so I want to do, I do want to touch on just a couple of, uh, some of your favorite exercises. And so if, That's easy. I, so if, if I'm at home and I don't have any equipment, uh, or, you know, I mean, I call equipment anything, so it can be a pickle jar, it can be whatever. If it weighs two pounds or five pounds, I consider that to be equipment. Um, but what would they be? What, what, what would you do to stay active? For me, my favorite has always been sandbags. Um, oh. they're, they're cheap they're yeah. affordable you can you if you don't have one you can make one if you don't ha- already have a sandbag guess what if you have a cat you got a big bag of cat milk. Uh, <laughs> there you go yeah if, if you're dog food if you got a backpack yeah. yeah throw some books in a backpack and you yeah. can do that mm-hmm. uh, the reason why i've always loved sandbags is one it taxes your grip um like nothing else uh especially the, the heavier ones it's an odd object so 100 pounds does not feel like 100 pounds on a barbell it's a much more natural moving pattern. When we use a barbell, if I wanted to, to get you to express and move the most amount of weight possible, the barbell is the way to do it. It's mm-hmm. perfectly balanced. It's nice and close and centered to your body. All the weight is externally loaded. There's nice places to put your hands. You know exactly where everything goes. Whereas a, a sandbag is large. It's awkward. The weight shifts. Uh, the weight is all internal, so you have to keep it tight. It's a much more natural um, type of move, movement pattern, something that you'll actually um, ex- experience in um, in nature. It's they're reliable, consistent, and the easiest way to to learn how to move weight properly. Like I mean, you've witnessed it as well. Watching some people squat as an external load, yeah. often it's just it's atrocious. Whereas you get them to like go and squeeze a sandbag, get them to use that sandbag, and it it automatically is going to crack because if it starts pulling out of positions, so you have to stabilize and keep everything yeah. nice and tight. Exactly. It works really well. Like the external load part of, of barbells and stuff like that, it doesn't really exist in nature. It's, it's something, it's, it's going to be a bag of concrete, a rock. It's going to be far away from your body, out close. So this is like, if you're training for Instagram views, then yes, a barbell is probably the, the best thing for you. But if you're training to be good at life, 
and to be actual functional using some odd objects um, comes in handy. Like with an ob object, one of my favorite things is it's, it's just not even moving it. It's just a carry. Mm -hmm. With a carry, it's an isometric contraction of the entire body to maintain position. So everything's kind of getting used. With isometrics, there's, lim there's no real limit to the intensity. You can just keep on holding, 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 and the, the pain level kind of goes up. You don't have to worry about the eccentric and concentric part. Mm -hmm. Less chance of muscle injury. You can do strength. You can do um, cardio. Like, you want great cardio? Grab a sandbag, throw it on either your shoulder, on your belly, whatever, and go walk for as far as you can until you drop it. Take a breather, pick it up, and try and get it back again. It's really simple. Your heart rate goes through the roof. Um, you can, with a sandbag, you can you squat it, you can put it on your shoulder, you can press it, you can throw it, you can try and throw it high. There's, it's almost limitless what you can, you can do with it. And this is why if, if you have a, for example, like a, a thousand or not even a thousand dollars anymore, a $1,500 rower, mm -hmm. one person can do one exercise on it and that's about it. Whereas you go grab a, even if you buy a top of the line sandbag with the sand, it'll still be $150, $200. Yeah. Which you can make it for a lot cheaper. And you have a your imagination is kind of the limit as to what you what you want to do with it. It's it's also very difficult to I am I've yet to see anybody other than the, the professional strongman, I've yet to see anybody really ever injure themselves with a with a sand with a sandbag doing anything. It's it's a I used to do is a lot of uh, when I did strongman, I used to be really like stones. I was a big fan. I still got a bunch of them sitting out back in the gym, mm -hmm. but they're not very popular for the average person because they make a lot of noise because uh, they're made of concrete. They rip up your skin. They're hard on your body. Whereas the sandbags, I have clients that are basically in their seventies that just like grab a, um, a sandbag, not even a sandbag, like a pillowcase, throw a couple books in and, and do exercises and stuff with that. There's, it's scaled to everybody's level. It's, it's a wonderful um, thing to use and the uh, it's this is why I've, I've liked it. it's simple it's 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 not fancy or sexy but it works very well that's awesome and so many things that people probably would have never thought of like the everybody's pretty much everybody has a knapsack they can throw some books in or whatever I mean there's yeah. tons of things that you describe there that they can use and I think that's awesome yeah. and like a lot of people I've seen are doing like ruck marches and mm -hmm. sort of throwing on a backpack and, and going but like if you are doing that to get healthy, well, if you go throw on a 50 pound backpack and carry it, it's kind of stationary. It's just sitting on yep. your shoulders. Yep. Why not make it a little bit more challenging and just hold it in front and then try and go for a walk and see how that works. You get to use yeah. you get more bang for your buck doing it that way. Yeah, absolutely. What a great suggestion. So I expect people to be sending us videos <laughs> of them carrying, carrying whatever their sandbag is from home, so their homemade sandbag. I would say if, if you can... <laughs> If you can get a 50% of your body weight yep. in a, into a sandbag or whatever and see if you can carry that at 400 meters and then uh, tell me how you're, uh, you're breathing, your cardio, and your body feels, uh, that will uh, destroy most people. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's a pretty, uh, pretty awesome challenge, I think, that you just threw out there. I think we'll probably see some videos come back for that one. So tell us how, uh, if somebody wants to get online with uh, CrossFit by Town and kind of get back into some routine. I know you guys are doing some Zoom. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and how people can get involved if they want a membership. Yeah, so that's the, uh, like with the, the classes we have, a lot of our members that are doing it. We also have a, uh, like friends, um, ex-members, stuff like that that are, are doing it. And like, to, honestly, at this point, like if anybody's willing to join, we even had, I don't know if it was um, people in the wrong meeting, but we had people I've never even seen show up. I'm, I'm basically the game for that. It's, unfortunately, it's pretty hard to, to correct um, people over Zoom, especially when there's right. a large class, because like with the Zoom, the great slash bad thing is like a speakerphone, kind of one person can talk at a time, and it gets a little right. bit messy. But the it it's easy; anybody can do this. It gives them like they can just the links are right on our website. They can show up to one of the classes, give it a try. Um, we tried to, to offer people variety, so like we have uh, like 10 a.m noon and five mm -hmm. and we've we have like all three of our coaches so like we like taylor does the the 10 i do the noon and dan does the five nice. we give people different energy different options some people even do uh, double classes um and just it, like if people are looking for extra ideas they can reach out email us as well like all of our coaches are we're, we're working but we're not working nearly as much and we have lots of ideas and for people to, to do more things or like even just simple things like if you just feel stuck 
Um, if you need help with your nutrition, with your mindset about habits or like, just like, like they would just want that, that external kind of validation to tell them like, this is what you should do or you're doing great. This is, this is what fitness professionals are for. This is the people who are, are still doing great in this or the people who are in it for the, the passion of helping people versus the, um, trying to, to just basically like make a buck. This is for like good trainers. It's more about like, it's a personal connection. I, I feel that I care more for the well being of, of some of the clients and they care about themselves. And that's, it's, it's, it's hard because I want them to, 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 to feel better, to do better and realizing that like, yes, starting anything is hard. Mm -hmm. um, that's the hardest part. We went the whole, the homeostasis and people don't like change. And, but in, I mean, also dealing with like clients who fall off the wagon and saying, listen, when you worked out, you knew how good you felt. Exactly. Like just get through that hump. Yeah. It's going to suck in the beginning, but get through that hump. You're going to feel better. It's like, if people could just take a pill and experience for a day, what it feels like to be, be healthy. I've been, I've been, uh, basically overweight. I've been sore. I've been, um, uh, basically unhealthy. I know what it feels like. And I know what it feels like to be healthy. And a lot of people just they they get used to the feeling the way they do when they think that like oh you're supposed to have these aches and pains or like oh like after 30 or actually not even before that they're like oh after 25 it's all kind of downhill <laughs> you can do yeah you I hear for some people yes it is but you can still you can still you can still improve or the last thing i want to hear is that when somebody says like oh well yeah i used to be in shape but blah 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 like yeah anybody of any age can do something and that's kind of the uh the thing is that like, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. If we can have ideas. We can, we can help you figure out what is going to work for you. It's literally a zero sum game for me to help somebody. I'm, I'm not giving them anything. I'm just passing on the knowledge. We both benefit from this. And mm -hmm. this is what that, like why we've always had like excellent coaching stuff because everybody's out there basically not to, to, to just try and scam somebody or trying to get, make a fast buck. It's we want lifetime basically like relationships with people having a great connection where we can help them and yeah. they might even be able to help the friends or they bring family members because they see the, the physical mental um, changes that these people are, are, are going through. Like our unbroken program, the, the feedback from the, the people that the, the happiness, the, the life changing stuff from these people is even on the worst days that makes it, it totally worthwhile yeah. is seeing the differences in, in the clients. Like a lot of people are, they're hard on themselves and they're like, Oh, well I've been here for a year and I haven't really basically like done anything. Well, you might think you haven't done anything, but yeah. seeing the difference of how you carry yourself or how you move or your confidence, um, all that makes a huge difference. Like seeing somebody come in and super shy and awkward and after a couple months or a year and they're, they're like, they're partaking the classes, they're being social, they're, they're, they relax, they've created all these social connections and friends. This is the best part of it. This is the, yeah. the fitness is, it's, the fitness is, is kind of a side effect of overall being healthy mentally, physically, um, socially. The, the, the whole social connection is one of the things that's really undervalued, which is becoming more apparent now. Yeah. But human beings have an innate desire to be included into something. This is why we, we came from like from the, I think it's Gladwell that wrote the book Tribes, basically how we, we have this thing that we identify as, which is also why like people used to have church. And now they have basically like, this is why like people are like, they identify their tribe as vegan or they they identify as like a CrossFitter or mm -hmm. uh, a marathoner. Cause they have this connection of like you and me are different, but we have this in common so we can relate and we can talk about this instead of that outsider that doesn't do that. And it helps bring people together, but we don't want to be, um, exclusionary we don't want to say like, oh well, but we do this and you do that it's like, no we're all doing the same thing we yeah. are all learning different things just because somebody's doing something different doesn't make it it bad or, or what you're doing doesn't make it any better it's as long as they're doing something everybody nobody starts off perfect we all have to start off we have to learn our lessons we've all if i look back at the way i did stuff five or ten years ago as a coach or as an athlete I, i'm horrified and that's how it should be is you should be wanting to continue to learn how to do better learn from your mistakes to, in order to be, it's it's a constant state of improvement for everybody yeah absolutely and you did touch on something there and i just want to take a couple minutes before we sign off um, because we didn't talk about it and that's the unbroken program and i have a feeling that maybe there's going to be some people watching that don't know about that so tell us a little bit about that so 
so the Unbroken program was started by um, a couple of our members. And it's when they came with me to the idea, um, I don't know if they thought I'd be hesitant for it, but I jumped on it. What it is, it's a, a free program on uh, uh, Friday nights at 7.30, where mm-hmm. anybody who's uh, in recovery from sub- substance abuse or has mental health issues, it, they can come and train for free. So it's completely anonymous. Um, if they, Even though their names are right on the board, they're all made up nicknames. Mm-hmm. And it immediately brings people together that all, have, again, have something common. So they don't didn't have fitness in common. They had their, their addiction, yep. their mental health issues mm-hmm. in common. And now they can understand how, with, which is very common with a lot of addiction of substitution, but substituting something negative for something a little bit something more positive. positive yeah. And seeing the, 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 the feedback and like even the people transitioning from, they start off on the Unbroken, they loved it so much, they became regular members and then started doing like daily classes and stuff like that. And seeing awesome. that, is like that is the people who need it the the most the the young the healthy the the super athletics like good for you but there's it makes you feel great but it's the the elderly the the people with the base depression anxiety and understanding how exercise will make everything feel better and it, it slowly starts to they start to realize that like just because they're working out there now they're starting to sleep better they're starting yeah. to to read about exercise they're starting to talk more about it and it's just it's it's nice to see the introduction of part of their life and how it changes their life for the, for the better. That's amazing. So Fridays at seven 30 and are you guys still doing that via zoom? Yeah. Nice. Okay, good. So I'm glad I asked that question. Cause that's uh, I think something that people will be interested in. Good. All right. Well, that's just about time for us. I can't believe that went by so quick and so much amazing information and I'll be trying the sandbag here. I don't have a sandbag, but well, my dog's only about five pounds, so I have to find something else. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't find something else to carry, <laughs> but I'm definitely going to try it and I'll make sure I share that video. <laughs> so yeah, so don't forget, Excellent. if you want to go online with CrossFit by Town 10, 12, and uh, 5, you can find that out on the website, which we'll have in a link uh, on this video, as well as on your favorite podcast host and, uh, and Unbroken every Friday at 730. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you yep. did, give it a like and uh, give us a thumbs up on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to today's show. Head over to lisapatelkilla.com to gain access to some amazing free resources that will help you gain energy, erase debilitating symptoms, and be the best version of you. Remember to give this podcast a like and follow me on social media at Lisa Patel Killa. I'm here every two weeks with a brand new episode of the Human Optimization Podcast. Until next time.